Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, October 6, 2020. I'm Isaac Boros, coming to you from the Sanctuary at St. Matthew's Methodist Church in Bowie, Maryland. About a year ago, I came, came across a little book that I forced the book club to read last year. It's called Hiding in Plain Sight, Sabbath Blessings by Molly Wolf. Copyright 1998. Uh, Molly Wolf is a graduate of Grinnell College in Iowa. She's Canadian. She also studied at Dalhousie University. And she has written this remarkable little book about everyday issues of everyday people. Here is one that I found very interesting, and I hope you will too. It's found on page 71 and 72 of her book and is entitled, Hot Potato. This is how it happens. If I have to face what I did, which I know is wrong, it will shame me, and that shame will be painful, and I fear that pain. So I will deny that I did anything wrong and play hot potato with guilt. The snake made me do it. If I have to face change, I know I will have to change myself, and changing myself will be painful, and I fear that pain. So I will refuse to change, and I will say that I am being firm in my principles. If I have to face uncertainty, it will mean puzzling and agonizing over my decisions instead of simply following the rules. And that's a whole lot of work and worry and trouble. I'm afraid of that. I might make mistakes. So I'll put everything in black and white and say that the alternative is chaos and relativism. If I have to face the homeless person or the poor or the deprived child, I will have to give up some of the good things I enjoy and giving up will be painful and I fear that pain. So I will be an individualist and fight for my right to keep every penny of what I can earn. If I must, must listen and try to comfort another person in pain, I don't know what to do or say, and I'm afraid I will feel inadequate. So I will cross the street or change the subject or block the flow with a plug of good advice or small talk or do anything so that I do not have to take some of that pain into myself, and I will call that protecting my privacy. If I have to face what was done to me, the abuse I suffered, then I will have to experience real agony, and I fear that pain. So I will pass on to others what was done to me. I will treat the other person as a thing, not a person, and I will call this being tough. If I have to face the fact that I have wounded another person and accept the pain of that knowledge, it will hurt. I'm afraid of how I would feel about myself. So I will hate and blame my victim and justify my own behavior. I will call this exposing evil and facing the facts. If I have to live in real connectedness with another person to learn real love, I will have to face the fact that I can be vulnerable and needy and dependent and weak and in desperate need of tenderness, and I'm afraid of being like that because that just gets you hurt. So I will run away from love and hide although I know that hurts the other, and I will call this being strong and independent. If I have to face what I have done to others, I will have to accept my own wrongness and hurtfulness, and that will hurt terribly. That's terrifying. So I will put on blinkers and not look at what I do. After all, good self-esteem is important. If I accept that I am loved and lovable, that I am God's precious child. I will have to learn to stand up to injustice, and that means I may get hurt. There will be conflict, and I hate conflict. I'm afraid of fighting. Sometimes it's easier to be a doormat. I will call this being gentle and looking after others. If I am to let go of what I passionately desire, it's going to hurt. I fear that loss. Easier to plunge on pursuing what I want, whatever it costs, and to call that firmness of purpose. If I am to trust in God, 
I will have to step out into what feels like emptiness, and that is frightening. So I will try to manage and control everything myself, and I will call that being responsible. If I am to ask for healing, I have to admit that I need it, and that means looking honestly at the past and revisiting a real pain, and that scares me. So I will insist that I do not have any problems, and I can take my licks, and I will call that being strong and stoical. If I am to accept God's love, I'm going to have to accept God's very clear vision of just who I am, and that is truly terrifying, because God is so good, and I am so not very good. Easier, easier to accept God as judgmental and rule-bound, or to turn my back on God completely. A truly loving God is the most terrifying thing of all. No wonder God weeps. Christ managed somehow to stare down his very human fear and to walk straight through it on the way to the cross, to show us once and for all that there is nothing, nothing at all to fear from the fullness of love. We too will find the courage if we're willing to believe and to trust in love when we're faced with fear and pain. God cups us so tenderly in the palm of his hand, seeing us which with such perfect clearness and loving us so dearly. All he wants is for us to accept that love, to allow ourselves to be loved and to love in return. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, giver of every good gift. We thank you for your love, even though sometimes we refuse to see it or accept it. Blessed are you, Lord God, for the voice of prophets who remind us of your love for us, even though we try to make excuses not to hear those voices. We thank you, God, for all those things which we see around us which show us your love. Help us always to be aware of your presence in the world, of your life within us, of your love active and alive in your community of faith and in the world all around us. We ask that you will keep us ever in your love and keep us ever mindful of our relationship to you and to one another, our brothers and sisters. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I wish you a pleasant evening.